Okay, so before we wrap up, Farah, let's talk about Hanakmura. Yeah. So actually, for listeners, we actually met because I was writing an article about Hanakmura um, in May. And Hanakmura passed away in May, and I was writing a story more focused on her pro wrestling career and her relationship with her mother. And when I was doing, I, I was pulling some quotes for my articles and the only real like translated material that was out there already was written by Farah. So I, I, I pulled her quotes and I, I sent her a, a tweet or a text or something. And I, I just wanted to like, let her know I, I'm using this uh, in my article. Just when, when we're pulling tweets, it's, I don't know. I, I, I was taught you got, you know, if you can reach out and connect with people about the same subject, uh, it's good to reach out and share thoughts and, and such. And now we're here, we're, you know, colleagues doing a podcast now, but, oh yeah, <laughs> but it's really cool in the end. What, what happened was far as from, she was watching Terrace house. I know Terrace house. I, I don't watch Terrace house. I, I knew Terrace House before all this going. I'm not a Terrace House guy. I'm a wrestling guy, but we're, we, you know, we're here and we're doing, we're collaborating and we're just, you know, talking about stuff we enjoy. So I think we really, you know, connected us at least. And I'm sure that must have happened. We're not like that special. I'm sure that happened in other situations. So that's, that's our backstory. But, um, what do you, what would you like to say about Hanukkah or anything? We can start anywhere. Okay, so when she passed away, I think I became a more spiritual person in the sense that, um, you know, when people pass away, I don't assume that they have actually fully left this world. I just think they're just a different kind of being and they're kind of watching over us in a way. And this might sound strange to some people, but honestly, when I was in Wrestle Kingdom, I felt like Hana was there in spirit um and uh the one moment i especially felt this way was when i was taking pictures of julia so she was entering the ring and she stood up uh, on i guess the bar of the ring and uh in i can show you what picture it is it's like a picture where uh she's looking up at a light a huge like light that's extremely bright it's especially bright you know for people in the arena section <laughs> like right. it's very blinding light it's like a um, glare but, yeah yeah it was a huge glare and i had to put my camera in front of me and start clicking so i won't get blinded by the light and still take pictures of julia um but when julia looked at the camera and had this incredible glow around her she looked like an angel and i couldn't help but think that glow was hana because that light only really appeared when the starter matches were going on so, um, and uh, I, I was very lucky. Uh, I got to meet Kyoko Kimura, her mother, a few weeks ago, actually. Um, I can tell you a little story about that. Uh, oh, please do. Yeah. Well, so before, let's, before we get into that, so Kyoko Kimura isn't just, you know, her mom. For the listeners I here don't know the full story, Hana Kimura was a young pro wrestler and her mother was a, a pretty young pro wrestler as well. And Kyoko Kimura was a complete hardcore badass pro wrestler who just retired a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. Three years ago, I think. Yeah. And uh, 2017, I think. Yeah. Four, oh my gosh. Four years ago now. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So yeah. So not so, and she's, she's an integral part of the story too. So that's the preface here, but fast forward a little bit. So you met with her uh, in Tokyo. Yeah, so I actually was not expecting to run into her. <laughs> um, so uh, she's really uh, fundraising a lot of money for the nonprofit she wants to start and also for the legal battle she's doing right now with Fuji Television. And um, I remember her posting about uh, this collaboration she had with Taka and Koro Cafe. Um, Taka and Koro Cafe is a cafe that's run by wrestlers. And it's actually next to the old NJPW uh, store in Sudobashi, like near the Tokyo Dome. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were selling like uh, beef bowls, like steak beef bowls and bentos, like to fundraise. And uh, I just wanted to go there to support Hana and, you know, get really good steak. The steak was actually amazing. Like I will go back for the steak. Oh, <laughs> sounds great. 
I love yes. Weedong. Yeah. And, uh, and apparently like bad luck folly is a regular customer at this restaurant too. Um, oh. yeah. Like all of, I think it's because like the wrestlers that run it are, we're from bullet club. So, um, but yeah, so I walk in and it's a very narrow and tiny space. And because of COVID, they were only letting people in like two at a time or something. Um, so I got upstairs, I entered the room and I see cameras all around me. And, uh, one of the people there I saw were like people from NHK. I think they were filming a new segment there. And I see this big puffy Afro. <laughs> there she is. Of my eye. <laughs> Unmistakable. Yes, and I turn around like a few degrees to the left. That's and, her. And there is the Kyoko Kimura. She is real. <laughs> <laughs> Did you 3D. expect it? No, I was not expecting it. <laughs> um, the reason why was because, um, you know, she never really officially announced that she was going to be there. Um, and also because I had one chance of meeting her, but I missed it. It was at Kai, uh, Kobayashi's like art exhibition for Hana. Mm -hmm. And I, I was in the area like a few hours after she had left. So I just mentally, you know, accepted that, okay, I'll probably never meet her. Right. Um, but no, like I saw her Afro and I got very emotional and I was nervous. I forgot how to speak all the languages I knew. <laughs> I <laughs> forgot my there. name. Oh, been there. <laughs> yes. Especially and, in Japanese. Yes. And, um, you know, I've met a lot of celebrities, luckily, because of, you know, my job with the Japan Times. But that was the only moment where I felt extremely nervous, you know, around a famous person. Um, but so, didn't you meet Kai from Terrace House, too? Yes, I did meet Kai. But the thing is, I interviewed him uh, for the Joshi pod. So I think that took away the nervousness because he's so chill. Um, wow. And I was also interviewing him with Eric, so Eric, because it was not just me interviewing him, it was more relaxing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was sitting down, went to, waiting for my bento, and she was talking to two other people at the time, and she was selling merch and stuff, like doing everything by herself. So, and with, uh, I think, one assistant. So because she looked busy, I didn't want to interrupt her. And I was like looking at her, looking back, looking at her, looking back, trying to see like when she would be like free to talk. And in my mind, like, I'm like, does she recognize me? Or like, does she know I'm here? Or does she know we're breathing the same air? <laughs> yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's a hard feeling to explain. You're, you're trying not to butt in, but it's like, you're not going to wait all day. And but you don't want to be rude, but you want to make sure that you're noticed, but you don't want to do anything to be rude, to be not noticed or noticed. So it's a lot yeah. of hesitancy. And are they, yeah, it's a very vague feeling kind of makes me anxious just thinking about it. Oh, but no. I, yes. I know exactly. I, I know what you mean, Farah. Yes. Yes. It's very anxiety inducing indeed. <laughs> um, and the thing is, like, we've talked to each other, like, online many times. It's just that, like, I've never physically seen her before. Sure. So I was like, I feel like I know her, but, like, I'm also a stranger. Uh, but, um, yeah, so I watched the two people leave, and I got up to her, and uh, she immediately said, like, thank you so much for helping me uh, with the translations. Like, she thanked me profusely. Um, there was this big camera in our faces and she was turning to the camera and saying, introducing me to the camera and introducing me to everyone and saying, hey, like, this is the girl who has helped me translate and really helped the international fans help Hana out. And I was like freaking out. I didn't even look at the camera. I kept looking at her. <laughs> what was it being filmed for? Um, so I'm not entirely sure. It looked like a DSLR camera. I don't know if it's for the npo or what but i know like there was another camera there for um, nhk specifically um but yeah i i was just speechless and i was very grateful that she said that to me and uh, we chatted for a little bit and then um i bought a t-shirt from her because uh, she, uh I, I posted it on my twitter but um she released another line of t-shirts. Uh, she collaborated with this brand in Okinawa that's owned by a wrestler. 
And, oh, super uh, Dolphin. Yeah, super yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she's selling like mint green and pink shirts uh, with uh, uh, Hana on it. And uh, yeah, I, I bought the shirt. And uh, she was also selling the calendars like in person, which was really nice and the stickers and everything. Um, but yeah, I, I talked to her for a bit, took pictures, and then I grabbed my bento and went out. <laughs> but I, I still, uh, like, even though she was incredibly busy, like, she went out of her way, you know, to personally talk to me and thank me and, you know, really, like, get to know me before I left. So it was it was a very surreal feeling I'll never forget. She seems like a very special person. Yeah, she is.